Hi folks, welcome to a Let's Play for AGEOD's Civil War game. Uh, this is my first Let's Play, I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, I've enjoyed playing this game for about six months and saw that on YouTube there wasn't anybody who posted one of these, so I thought I would go ahead and throw one of these on there for posterity in case anybody wants to watch it. Uh, there's a lot to go over, it's a very complicated game, so let's just dive in and I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll do the best I can. So I'll start a new game, and I'll click on this various scenarios you can click on. I'll click on this one, which is the full war, uh, just the default name of the game. And I'm going to play as the north. You can play as the south if you want, but uh, I always like playing as the north because I like emancipating the slaves. Uh, but that's just my style. I think playing the south has some appeal. It's a more difficult game, I think, because the north has more resources. <laughs> Uh, you get to choose whichever side you want to choose, want to play, depending on your uh, particular lifestyle. So, here's the map. It's a map of the United States. So here's St. Louis. Over here is New York City. And uh, the map's broken up into these little regions. Think of them like tiles on a chessboard. When you have units, the units are going to be in one region or another um, at any given time. And the, the, the regions are broken up by geography. Uh, and the geography is going to matter. When a battle occurs, if it occurs in the mountains, the defender might have more of a uh, uh, an advantage. Or if, let's say, one of my units crosses a river in order to attack uh, Confederates in another region, uh, I may, since I'm attacking across a river, uh, have more trouble than I would have if the river wasn't there. So... Uh, Yep, that's all these little regions based on geography. And in some of the regions, there are cities. Like here's Harrisburg, New York City, Washington, D.C., etc., etc. And uh, I'll go over these, these little cities later. They have various effects on the game, on the economic model, and on the, the fighting, uh, the actual fighting of the game, the fighting of the battles. The only other thing to say, I think, about the map is that it cuts off. So you see the upper right-hand corner, it's got most of New York and a little bit of Connecticut right here. You see Danbury, and that's about it. So there are these boxes outside the map to uh, accommodate the existence of other areas. So here's New England with Boston in it. If I go to the west edge of the map, you see it cuts off around here's uh, the edge of Iowa. So there's these regions out here, San Francisco, Portland, Denver, uh, etc., uh, and there's boxes all around the edge of the map that correspond to different regions. But the most important one that I'm going to be going back to that stuff happens at is here in New England. What raised a lot of troops up there in New England, and then I have to move them out to where the fighting is actually occurring. So that's the map. I hope all that was clear. Uh, I don't know if you can read in the upper right-hand corner, but right now it's early April 1861, and the war hasn't gotten started yet. Virginia hasn't seceded. The Battle of Fort Sumter hasn't happened yet. So all my units are locked. I can't move anybody around. Everybody is just in stasis right now. So there's not much for me to show you. I can't can't do much on the map right now. But what I can do is some administrative stuff. Now if I click up here, this is the ledger, and there are various tabs where you can do various things. And I'll show you here what I usually do on my first turn. Uh, first, click on this Replacements tab. And this is a, a little complicated and hard to explain. It's uh, As I have units on the map and they get into battles, the units become depleted. They're going to lose men. And they need to draw new men from somewhere to bring themselves back up to fighting strength. This, this is, here is where you draw them from. Uh, where those units are going to be drawing new men from. So I need to fill this up so there's replacement men sitting in the wings ready to uh, keep my units up to fighting strength. Uh, what I usually do is buy five line infantry replacements. Uh, I'm spending resources to purchase these, but we'll go over the economics of this later. But I'm going to purchase five line infantry because those are the most common units. There'll be a lot of those running around. Two cavalry, two field artillery, and then one of everything else, except I'm going to ignore these two on the right, the supply train and the engineer, because these units don't do any fighting. 
I'm going to buy replacements for the fighting units and ignore the non-fighting units for now. Because it's early in the war and, and resources are limited. The next tab I go to here is economics. I'm going to buy some boats. So I about bought 20 points worth of boats. Um, so what's going on here is, if you see in this this little box up here, this lists various uh, modes of transportation that I have certain capacities, and I got 150 points in railroad capacity, which I'm ha happy with right now. But I only got 30 points in riverine transport uh, capacity, river boats. So I'm buying 20 more of those because this number 30 isn't quite as high as I'd like it to be. And finally, I'm going to impose a blockade on the South, which, like I said, we'll go over the economic model later, but this is going to give me some uh, resources with, at a possible cost. Uh, describe that cost really briefly. If I go here to the Objectives tab, you see it says here, Confederacy Foreign Help 2. The idea is uh, this number two is going to fluctuate around as the game goes on and certain things happen. And if it ever reaches 100, then England is going to join the, join the Confederacy and, and fight on their side. I'm the North, so I don't want that to happen. So I want to keep this number low as possible. But the cost of my imposing this blockade is it might change England's opinion. It might make them more likely uh, to join the war at some point in the future. That, too, might go up. Uh, but that cost is worthwhile for the resources I get, so I'm going to impose the blockade now. And there's percentages involved. The foreign, the foreign help number might go down as a result of my imposing blockade. We'll find out next turn. So, I think that's it. That's all I usually do first turn. There's no units to move around or anything. So the only thing for me to do is to hit end turn. Uh, now we get to the most important thing I need to explain during this uh, video what happens when I hit next turn. This is a simultaneous move game, meaning um, I can't move this unit right now. He's locked. But if I told him to move somewhere, like over there, he doesn't do it immediately. Uh, when I hit end turn, this unit will have been given those orders, and then the game will step forward in two-hour increments, and this guy will walk across the map at the same time that the Confederate units are walking across the map given their orders. If two units run into each other, there could be a battle. That's how battles occur. So you'll see I'll click in turn now. And uh, if you watch down here, the first thing is the AI is making its decisions about what the South is going to do. Then you'll see it start to step forward in time. So, do do do. it's still figuring out what it's going to do. There you go. On day one, it started stepping through time and on day one it found that my unit in Fort Sumter ran into their attacking unit in Fort Sumter and there was a battle and I lost Union defeat uh, which always happens you can never win the battle of Fort Sumter this is the battle screen I, I don't have time in this video to really go over it but uh, we'll have to do that a future time but suffice to say the North lost the battle of Fort Sumter so I'm going to close the window. If you watch down here, processing day 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that's it for turn one, and that's it for this video. I hope I got it all in under 10 minutes, and I hope that uh, you enjoyed this. And uh, I'll be making another video about turn two very shortly. Thanks for listening.